What's going on guys? My name is Jesse and I'm the creator of Infamous Arrow. A few months back we made a post asking you guys to drop questions about the brand. Uh, as you can tell we've been crazy busy lately and there's been a lot of changes going on behind the scenes which we'll explain a bit more about later. But as for right now we're going to jump right into the Q&A. So first question is from Delivery Boy 2.8 and he asks what was the transition from Locals to Infamous like? So as some of you guys may know I used to have a YouTube channel called YYC Locals with over 160,000 subscribers. We also had an international lifestyle and merchandise brand associated with that. A lot of our videos were documenting building our cars and then road tripping them across North America and attending various car shows. So we did this for about two to three years and then right as COVID started was when things started to slow down. Our time together was limited due to the restrictions and all that. And this is kind of when we started to all go our separate ways. Uh, this was also right about the time that Infamous started to become my main priority. And it was when I realized that Infamous was the part that I really enjoyed the most and where my true passion lies. Right around the same time, I moved into a new house and I had a double car detached garage that was heated at the time. So this garage would soon become the first ever Infamous HQ. This kind of allowed me to build parts and kind of keep focusing on Infamous while the Locals thing was shutting down. So there was also another question that was, does Locals have any connection to Infamous? Uh, the only connection it has is that I used to be Locals and now I'm Infamous. That's it. Second question is from That Boy Prit, and he said, how did you make the move from a home garage to a shop? A couple months after I had started working out of the home garage, uh, things were growing quickly and I realized that I needed help. So this is about the time that I hired my first employee, Mateo. So there was two of us working in this home garage, actually it was half of a home garage because I had my skyline parked on the other side. So there was two of us working in half a garage and on the days that we had a car in and it was really cold outside, we had to have the garage door shut and then we were working in like literally like a two foot by four foot corridor cutting sheets of ABS and we were so crammed for space. It worked for a while but like we needed more space bad and that was like the biggest problem we were facing at the time. Once we realized we had this problem, I had a Nissan 240SX and a Lexus GS400 at the time. Uh, both cars I ended up selling in order to get money for the down payment for the shop. It's a pretty expensive process, so we saved up money for maybe one to two months and then kind of put everything into the shop, and that's when we made the transition. Next question is from Cole Termountain. What was the vision prior to starting Infamous versus what the vision is now? This is a difficult question to answer. The vision honestly hasn't changed much. I guess the basic premise of the vision was that I just wanted a creative way to express myself through a physical form and you know I always love modifying cars. I love making things of my own and making them unique. So this was kind of just the perfect outlet for me to express myself. In the beginning it was a lot of ABS parts and it still is but you know we're stepping more into the wide body and custom fiberglass, carbon fiber parts, things like that. So. I guess the vision has always been the same, it's just the means of production that has changed. Uh, in the beginning it was very simple things, and now, you know, as we're getting more resources, more team members, you know, things are getting more complex very quickly. But I guess the vision has always kind of just been the same, it's just a, a creative way to express myself. Uh, this is also where our slogan came into play, expression of the mind through aero design. It's literally that, a way to express yourself uh, through aero design. <laughs> Next question is from Zypher underscore S, and they ask, how does one go about getting custom work done? For things like V1 arrow and V2 arrow, it's definitely easier. You know, it's something as simple as like a, me a couple measurements if you're able to send us that. If you're local to the city, you can obviously bring your car in and we can build you a custom kit. Uh, if you're not from Calgary, you can send us measurements along with photos and things like that if you have a super custom project that you want done. As for more complicated parts, such as fenders, hoods, things like that, it's definitely more challenging. Um, the development cost of these is just way too high to do one-offs. So if you're really keen on getting something done, you're definitely more than welcome to email us and we'll entertain every request. So shoot us an email, info at infamousarrow.com and uh, we can at least look into it, but there's no promises. Uh, last question is from Carding is Life 100 and they asked, do you ever plan to expand? Do you even plan to expand? Uh, the simple answer is yes. Expansion is always the goal. If you're not planning to expand, then what are you even doing? You should always be learning and always improving. So yes, definitely. Stay tuned for more. We got lots to reveal. This is just the beginning. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks for watching and supporting.